have yet? Are we live? Amen. Amen. Looks like we are. Amen. We are live. Amen. In living color. We are right here. Uh, we have returned again for another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. It's our hope. It's our desire. It's our wish that the Lord God Almighty would uh, bless us. He would show up and be part of, of our prayer conference call this morning. That he would be here in the midst with us, enabling us not only to lift up our prayers, but also to be able to um, see them uh, be realized in his timing according to his will. Uh, you know, uh, the thing I love about prayer is that it is uh, one of those things that allows us uh, uh, to engage in ministry regardless of whether or not we are whether or not we are ordained ministers or not prayer is a ministry for everybody and all you have to do if you want to pray is simply pray uh whatever prayers god has for you and so today what we're going to do you and i we're going to enter into ministry together you and i we're going to uh touch and agree we're going to intercede on behalf of other people who are going through some things we're going to let the lord god use us in a mighty tremendous way so that we uh are able to uh, serve others, serve God, and bring uh, love, glory, uh, patience, kindness, uh, healing, uh, employment, resolution, restoration, uh, renovation. We're gonna do, we're gonna engage in in prayer in such a way that persons' lives are gonna be changed. And let me say this because I know someone may be asking the question: Why do we pray? I don't ever see the uh, the things I pray for realized. I pray um, uh, for people all the time. I don't ever see. You know what? Here's the thing: our job as the servants isn't necessary to see the uh, the product of our service. Our job as servants is to do the work. And here's the thing: uh, you're praying for people every time we come together that you may never ever meet in your life. But guess what? God is doing an awesome, amazing thing in their lives. Let me share with you. The last time we came together for um, Inspirational Wednesdays for prayer, we prayed for a, for a, a woman and her husband. Her husband, um, excuse me, has been diagnosed with cancer. And she was really upset because uh, he was having a hard bout with it. All right. And as his caretaker she was the one left uh responsible for making sure he got everything he needed well we prayed we touched and agree we prayed uh, we joined other people praying because it was a lot of us praying for this brother and this sister and i got a text message from a, a someone that knows them who said they who wanted me to wanted them to wa that wanted to thank me on behalf of the brother and sister saying that things have gotten better that while they're not necessarily easier they're they're easier to deal with and that he's out of uh, that part of, of his suffering that part of his cancer which was hurting and harming him as much as this he's got uh, to go through some physical therapy he's got to go through some some healing but he's, it, it, the doctors say it looks like he's out of the roughest part of that uh, experience, that ordeal. And so I want to tell you that happened because all of us prayed. Again, you wouldn't know him if he walked by you today in the grocery store. But it happened because we prayed. All right. So. I want you to understand as we're going through this call today that we are engaged in a powerful ministry. We are engaged in a ministry that God is using to literally turn the world upside down, to bless people's lives. There are persons uh, that are walking around right now experiencing the fullness of God because you and I prayed. And, and, and I don't want us to get the big uh, head to think it's all about us. No, it's all about God. But what I'm saying is your prayers are effective. The word says the uh, fervent um, 
prayers of the righteous are effective. And so here it is. We're going to pray fervently. We're going to pray insistently. We're going to pray expectantly. We're going to pray faithfully today uh, on behalf of those persons who are going through things, those persons who are dealing with uh, different issues, different uh, problems, different predicaments. Amen? Amen. Let's do this. Let's begin with our opening word of prayer here this morning. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right this very instant, God, praying, God, that you would do a wonderful, amazing, incredible, and impossible thing, not only in our lives this morning, but in the lives of those persons that we will pray for. Father God, this is a ministry that we all can participate in. This is a ministry that we all can be ministers in, regardless of what positions or uh, assignments you have uh, tasked us with completing within the body. Father God, let my neighbor know that her prayer or his prayer has power because we are touching in the green. Let uh, me know that my prayer has power because we are touching in the green. God, let someone's life be changed. Let someone's life be uh, altered. Let someone's life be forever transformed because of the time that we spend in prayer right here today. Now, Father God, we understand, we know that no prayer could do anything if it's not in your will. And so, God, we ask that the prayers that we are lifting up will be in your will. Not only that, God, but we pray and ask, we request that you would allow your Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide on our call, guide our hearts and minds, move through our mouths so that, God, the prayer requests, the prayers, the praise reports, the words of encouragement, the testimonies, and the witnesses that we share are such that, God, they give life, they sustain life, they rebuild life, uh, they, they renovate life, they transform life, they extend life. Uh, they just are the embodiment of life so that someone lives life more abundantly today than they've ever lived it before. Father God, we thank you and we praise you. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent, uh, and, and, and just awesome name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Amen. If you have your uh, Bibles or you have an a electronic device with a Bible app on it, we want you to uh, turn with us to the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 25. Our scriptorial focus this morning uh, uh, is uh, verses 19 through 30. So that's Matthew, chapter 25, verses 19 through 30. The New Revised Standard Version of the scripture reads as follows. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the first slave who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the second slave with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the third slave, who had received the one talent, also came forth, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, get and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with, with the ten talents. For all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. 
but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thus far, the word of God. The title of our devotional this morning is Operating in Spiritual Accountability, Part 3. Operating in Spiritual Accountability, Part 3. The Lord God Almighty is currently in the devotional series, Operating in Spiritual Accountability. The explicit purpose of this devotional series is to help all of us become more accountable Christian disciples and stewards. More specifically, he wants us to know what it means to be accountable so that our accountability will be on point. Our Heavenly Father wants us to be so accountable as his spiritual servants that our spiritual accountability will be unquestionable to anyone that examines us with a critical spiritual eye. Thus far, we have learned quite a few things about being accountable as God's spiritual servants. First, we have learned that it was always the Lord our God's explicit intention for us to steward ministry. ministry. He designed Christianity so that we would be both his followers and faith and his leaders to other followers. Second, we also learn that because we are called to steward ministry, ministry does not belong to us. It belongs solely to the Lord. We can take no ownership in it. At most, we can only claim to borrow the very ministries we operate in. Third, we learn that since our Heavenly Father did not make any two Christian disciples and stewards the same, no two spiritual servants are equipped with the same gifts and abilities. This also means that our God does not assign the same level of spiritual responsibility to all of us. These three things are not the only truths that God our Father has taught us about being accountable as his disciples and stewards. He has also taught us that when he assigns stewardship responsibility to us, it includes the implicit instruction to manage the subject matter of our assignments so that it is multiplied exponentially. From there, the Lord also taught us that he leads a decision about how we will fulfill our stewardship responsibilities to us. And finally, our Heavenly Father taught us that every assignment of stewardship responsibility includes an implicit promise that if we do our very best while stewarding ministry, we will successfully multiply such ministries exponentially. These truths have been indispensable help indispensable in helping us understand both what it means and how to operate in accountability as Christian disciples and stewards. But as indispensable as these truths are, they do not exhaust the information that the Lord above wants to share with us. There is still more for us to learn about spiritual accountability. Why don't we let him take us where he wants to take us in terms of operating as Christian disciples and stewards that are accountable? Our first point this morning, amen, is there will come a time when all Christian disciples and stewards will have to give an accounting of how we went about fulfilling our stewardship responsibilities. There will come a time. When all Christian disciples and stewards will have to give an accounting of how we went about fulfilling our stewardship responsibilities. As with the previous two installments of this devotional series, the scriptural focus is Jesus' The Parable of the Talents, found in Matthew chapter 25. When we read this biblical pericope, there are several facts that are uncontroverted. It is absolutely undeniable that the master in this story goes on a trip that will take him away from his home and business for an extended period of time. It is also not in question that this same master entrusted his property with his three slaves. There is also no disagreement that the master required each slave to steward the property assigned to them. In this case, that property was talents. These facts are not in dispute. When we continue to critically examine Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30, we realize 
that there are more facts that are also uncontroverted. One of those facts is that at some point the master does eventually return home from his journey. That fact is followed by the additional fact that when he did, the master required all three slaves to give him an accounting of how they managed his property during his absence. There is no question in my mind that the quote-unquote man in this story is the Lord God Almighty. There is also no doubt in my mind uh, that the slaves in this parable represent Christian disciples and stewards. I also have no question in my mind that the quote-unquote talents that these slaves were charged with managing is ministry, specifically Christian discipleship and stewardship. In that same vein, it is, it's, it is extremely settled for me that the day will come when every last individual that calls himself or herself a Christian will have to provide an accounting to our Heavenly Father of our, steward, our spiritual stewardship. We will, be, we will be required to show him in great detail how we manage that which he had assigned to us as his servants. This means that many of us need to decide today to make some serious efforts at being the Christian disciples and stewards our God has called us to be. You know, yesterday I was talking with uh, one of my really, 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 really best friends. And we were talking about how many people think that they have uh, tomorrow to do what God is calling them today. In fact, we were talking about salvation. Uh, how many people say, I don't need to accept Christ today because I can do it tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is not guaranteed. Tomorrow is not granted. And while we were talking about salvation yesterday, we we're talking about stewardship today, the other S word. And here's the thing. God has placed something in our hands. He's given us some aspect of ministry, some assignment of discipleship, some responsibility of stewardship. And he has put it in our hands with the intention for us to manage it. And the expectation is that he expects us to produce something with it and that uh, no matter how long we live it doesn't matter if we live three years or 300 years God is going to expect us to be able to show on our day of judgment that we were faithful stewards over there there will be an accounting in fact I say that for those of us who are, are so worried about our neighbors who seem to be getting away with doing nothing or getting in trouble or being evil or living sinful life you don't got to worry there will be an accounting where all of us will have to come before the Lord and share what we've done with the time with the breath with the energy, with the ability, with the thoughts, with the words, with the actions that he has allowed us to possess in this life. It's coming. That means you and I, we can't play around anymore. We sure enough cannot play around anymore. I think I said this the last time we were together. I've been talking about writing my book for years now. And actually I've written a book and God has given me a second one. God told me this year, it's got to be published. It has to be published. No more time messing around. And so I'm sure there's something God has put in your charge. God has told you, God has made you aware of something you need to do. You don't have any more time. You got to get started today. Because if today's your last day, today's the last day you inhale, exhale. Today's the last day you open your eyes today is the last day you have be you want to make sure that when you meet your Lord tomorrow morning <laughs> you have a report to give him that shows how you stewarded what he's blessed you with so our first point this morning is there will come a time when all Christian disciples and stewards will have to give an accounting of how we went about fulfilling our stewardship responsibilities. Our second point this morning is, demonstrated accountability always produces positive 
tangible results. Let me say it again. Demonstrated accountability always produces positive, tangible results. I know we tiptoed around this point during the previous installment of our devotional series, but today the Lord our God wants to hammer the point home to us. Verses 20 through 23 prove beyond any doubt that when we demonstrate accountability as Christian disciples and stewards, such demonstrations will produce t positive, tangible results. Notice, if you will, that while the master was away, both the first and second slaves actively managed the talents entrusted to them. Again, Matthew chapter 25 does not go into any detail about how these slaves manage their master's property. Instead, it asserts only that they actively managed it. And the proof of this fact is that their quote-unquote management of the talents produce a positive, tangible return. In fact, the return produced as a result of their management is incredible. For some people, it is almost impossible to believe. The first and second slaves manage the talents given to them in such ways that their management produced a 100% return. I'm not certain of what investment or business venture in today's world produces a 100% return. Ask anyone who plays the stock market. They put a lot of money in to see incremental growth in, in their investments. They, you, you can invest $100 in the stock market today and maybe only make a $10 growth in seven days. That's a 10% return on investment. I don't know, I, don't, I hardly ever hear someone say, I put a million dollars in the stock market and got a million dollars out the next day. No, that's not how it works. Anyone that gambles, now I know we got gamblers out there, ain't no need to pretend like they don't exist. Gamblers end up gambling more and receive less on the investment they make in gambling. Business owners, and I'm a business owner, I have my own practice, law practice. I, I haven't ever made close to 100% return on the investment I've made in my business. I haven't ever made that, ever. Again, I don't know anyone who makes 100% return on any investment they make. That is unheard. If we could make that, uh, many of us would be gazillionaires right now. The truth is, uh, uh, again, I think the closest we come to experiencing a 100% return on investment and managing property occurs when some of us go into business for ourselves. But the truth is uh, about, uh, about owning our own businesses uh, and operating them is that there's still costs that we almost always have to pay, that almost always, no, there's, there's still costs that we always have to pay, that almost always keeps us from experiencing a 100% return. Check it out. There's one thing in reality, one thing in the world that will produce a 100% return. Are you listening? Are you paying? Come closer to me in the, to the computer. I want to tell you what that one thing is that will produce a 100% return on investment. That spiritual stewardship. When we operate in complete accountability, as we, when we operate as the stewards that God requires us to be, we give the Lord our God our absolute best. We do not attempt to hide or conceal anything from him instead operating complete accountability as spiritual stewards focuses our every thought word and deed on ensuring that god's quote-unquote quote-unquote property is cared for with the utmost dedication and commitment in other words we put uh, not a hundred percent but a hundred and ten percent into what it is God has called us to do. And guess what? Our Heavenly Father sees our demonstrated accountability, and in seeing it, He gives it His full blessing, enabling it to prosper beyond our wildest imaginations and our greatest expectations. Let me say this to someone right now. If you are the type of person walking around declaring that nothing you've done is working, that 
uh, all you give, you're not getting it back. That it seems like uh, life is unfair because everything's working against you. Let me ask you this question, and seriously, I mean, don't, 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 don't try to, read. this is a rhetorical question because I want you to think about it. I don't want you to try to defend yourself to me because you, you don't have to defend yourself to me. I'm not, no, I'm, I have no power over you. I'm just here to help you. Could it be that the reason why your efforts are unproductive is because you aren't giving them your all? I mean, I'm right here in the word. The first two slaves gave it their all. We're not told what they did, and I don't think it's important for us to know what they did, because what they get, what they did, what they did specifically is not the issue. The issue is that they gave it their all. They went about stewarding this property, and it produced a result. I just told you, I'm, I, God told me I have to get my book published uh, this year, 2022. It has to be published. Well, uh, I've been trying to be a good steward over the material that he has given me to write. And so when I put all my chapters together in the process of getting my manuscript ready to send to a publisher, I end up having 549 and a half pages. That's 550 pages. It shocked me. I didn't know I had that many. I simply sat down to write what God told me to write. Every word is what God told me to write. I didn't swerve. I didn't. If He told me to take it out, I took it out. Every word it produced a tangible 550 pages. Now here's the funny thing. I, I my flesh said it, my heart said, it, my mind said it, and and when I talked to God, He confirmed it. Ain't no one gonna read a 550 page length book. So I said, God, what are we going to do? What, how are we going to uh, uh, deal with this? God said, what's one of your favorite scriptures? I said, Isaiah 61, 7. He said, what does Isaiah 61, 7 says? For those that have been condemned, for those that have been shamed, double shall, be your, be, be, double shall you get for your trouble. I know some of us think that some slick preacher made that up, double for your trouble. No, no. That's, a, that's an actual scripture. It's Isaiah chapter 61, verse 7. And God said, aha, I've given you double for your trouble. Remember I told you that your book was going to be a multi-volume uh, uh, work. Well, guess what? It'll start off with two volumes in the whole already. A positive, tangible result. One of our fellow prayer warriors, Pastor Kevin, War Kevin White, I can't say Kevin, Kevin Warrior. <laughs> right, bro, bro, brother Kevin, I'm making you a warrior. Amen. But you are a warrior for God. I remember when Pastor White started the daily prayer call. Amen. I was doing Inspirational Wednesdays. He was doing the prayer, daily prayer call. And at one point, he was doing it by himself. And I remember us having a talk where God said, if you would just trust me, I'll send people to help you. And what happened, Kevin was, Pastor White was talking to a mutual frat brother who said, you know, this frat brother here is a pastor and he's got a prayer conference call going himself. Why don't y'all hook up together? We hooked up. It's been history since. And since then, God has just been adding and adding and adding to where now Kevin is merely facilitating not having to pray three times a day for this because he stewarded the ministry that God gave him. I'm trying to give you real life examples. George Washington Carver took a peanut. Where's my peanuts? I can show you. Amen. Oh, there. Oh, I, I can't get them. Took a peanut. The brother came up with 300 uses for the peanut, including peanut butter that we put on our peanut butter uh, uh, and jelly sandwiches that we put in our Reese's pieces and Reese's cups and Reese's snacks. Peanut butter. He stored it, that one peanut, and produced so many products. I'm giving you these real life examples so that you would understand that whatever God has given to you, whatever gift, whatever ability, if you were stored it, it will produce a tangible result. 
I don't care if your gift is helping. If you would go about serving help, you will produce a tangible result. I don't care if your gift is teaching. If you'll go about trying to teach and teaching, giving your all in teaching, God will produce a, a, it will produce a tangible result. You just have to actively demonstrate your accountability. And God would do the rest. So, our first point this morning is there will come a time when all Christian disciples and stewards will have to give an accounting of how we went about fulfilling our stewardship responsibilities. Our second point this morning is that demonstrated accountability always produces positive, tangible results. Our last and third point, our third and last point this morning is the Lord, our God, the Lord God Almighty bases his decision to bless or condemn us upon our demonstrated accountability as his disciples and stewards. The Lord God Almighty blesses his decision, bases his decision to bless or condemn us upon our demonstrated accountability as his disciples and stewards. Let me say that again. I messed that up. The Lord God Almighty bases his decision to bless or condemn us upon our demonstrated accountability as his disciples and stewards. As we bring today's devotional to a close, our Heavenly Father wants us to notice something. Notice that how each slave went about fulfilling his or her stewardship responsibilities determined whether that slave gained access to everything the master owned or was cruelly punished. The master identified the first two slaves as quote-unquote good and trustworthy. And I think in the King James, they're, they're identified as good and faithful. Same, same, same description. And he based such identification upon their faithful obedience as stewards over his talents. By the same token, the master identified the third slave as quote-unquote wicked and lazy. And the reason he made such de declarations is because, is because the third slave made no attempt at all to be the steward the master required. He or she did not manage the property at all. Neither did he or she invest the talents so that it could earn some interest, any interest, interest for the master to collect when he returned home from his journey. Reviewing this declaration reveals to me as a Christian that what ultimately matters in God's eyes is not necessarily whether or not we have lived a quote-unquote good life. I sincerely believe that if we're doing exactly what the Lord requires us to do, then we will live a good life by default. You see, we, can't, we cannot seek to serve our Heavenly Father in one aspect or area of our lives and then expect to do what we want in the other aspects and areas. That is not how it works. Either we serve him in all areas and aspects of our lives, or we do not serve him at all. Hear, hear what God is saying. There are a whole lot of people that are good Christians. They pay their tithes. They come to church. They come to Bible study. They come to Sunday school. They don't bother anyone. They leave a quiet life. But there are a whole lot of good Christians that aren't being great stewards. In his book, Chip, in Chip Inger's book, Good to Great, 10 Things uh, That All Great Christians Share in Common, he starts with the premise that for the Christian, the uh, enemy, the, the, the adversary to great is good. In other words, he's saying that what God is calling us to be is great Christians, great people of faith, great disciples, great stewards, but we've got in our minds that it's only good enough, but the only thing that matters is we be good. You know, there's an old saying that said, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Good intentions. I think the takeaway for us all this morning is that when the Lord God examines us on our days of judgment, will he find sons and daughters that use our all when storing the incidents of Christian discipleship and stewardship he assigned to us? Or will our God find whimpering and sniveling servants cowering in the corner, completely aware that we failed to use any effort at stewarding ministry? 
My gut tells us that all of us want to be either the first or second slave. None of us want to be the third slave. Well, since that is so, then we all need to make the decision this day to operate at a streaming high level of spiritual accountability. This is not just the way, it's the only way. Check it out. Oh, and let me say this, because I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I just want to deposit this right here for you uh, in this place. Matthew 25, before the accounting, does not indicate at all that there was anything morally wrong with uh, the third slave. The third slave was not a thief. He wasn't a liar. In fact, he's rather uh, uh, straightforward and honest, really. Um, there wasn't anything morally wrong with him. The thing that was wrong with him was he was too afraid, too fearful, unwilling, disobedient in his stewardship. I wonder, I sit here and wonder how God is going to respond to two, two believers. One is a believer that never did anything wrong, that always did everything right, but did not steward the, the property that God gave him. And the other is a, is a believer that stumbled, fell, but got up but never, never, never did not be the steward God called them to be. Yeah, they, 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 they may have cussed, fuss. Yeah, may, they may not have been loving all the time. They may have broken a beer bottle and want to go over the top of someone's head with it. Yeah, they may have told a little lie here, there. They may have stole a few grapes from the grocery store, you know, may have cheated on one or two tax income returns, but they took the talent God gave them, or the talents God gave them, and they steward them in such a way that God has returned. I wonder which one is getting into heaven and which one is not. I, 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 if you think it's the former and not the latter, I think you're wrong. I think the latter is getting there, not the former. Because technically that's what the Pharisees did. They lived good lives, but they never stewarded the, the property, which was God's people, in the way God wanted them to be stewarded. Jesus had to come and steward the sheep. I'm trying to help someone today. I want you to know this, because I want to be in heaven with you. Amen. Notice what I'm saying. I want to be in heaven with you. I want you to be there with me. Amen. I'm going. Amen. Don't 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 get it. Don't don't trip. I'm going to heaven. So I want you to be there with me. And I'm encouraging you. No, I'm begging and pleading with you right now that whatever it is that the Lord God Almighty has put before you to do as his uh disciple and steward, please, 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 please. Get busy doing it. Don't wait. Don't say I'll do it tomorrow. And and give it your all. Give it your all. Uh, I was telling my 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 people, uh, not this Sunday, Sunday before last, in the movie uh, uh, with, uh, with Robert Downey Jr. and Cuban Gooding, uh, Men of Honor. Uh, how uh, Carl Bashir's father, that's the character that Cuba Gooding Jr. plays, his father tells him before he goes off to the Naval Academy, he says, one, don't come back. He knew that if his son came back, he would be caught up in what was in the cycle that was happening, the downward spiral and cycle that was happening in that little country town. Two, he said, uh, give it your best. Even if you have to bust open old wounds, give it your best. And as we see in the movie and, and what happened in reality, Carl Bashir did. Even when he lost his leg, he still gave it his best and became the first black Navy diver in U.S. history that also reached the rank of Master Chief. There's only one rank higher than that. And that is that, that is the enlisted level of, of, of a four star general, the enlisted version of, uh, uh, of, of a of a of a of a full admiral. I'm sorry, in the Navy's admiral of a full admiral, 
and whatnot. He's the only one to have to have reached it thus far. I'm saying that to you because those of us who've seen the movie or read his book know that his determination to be the best took him to places he never could dream of for himself. What is your determination going to, where is it going to take you? What is it going to enable you to do? What are you going to experience? Because you have been the best that God wants you to be. Okay, I'm done. Amen. Let's do this. Let's have a prayer over uh, our devotional here today. Let's, uh, I see, I see prayer requests. Amen. I see, I see Sister Lily and Sister Gail have been on uh, the chat talking as we've been uh, dealing with our, uh, with our, um, uh, uh, devotional. Let's have our word of prayer over our devotional. Then we're going to move into the prayer section of our call. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now. Thank you, God, for this day, for this is the day that you have made, God. We are glad. We are rejoicing. And Father God, thank you for reiterating to us the requirement that we give our best as your stewards. That 75, 80, 85, even 99% will not do. It's either 100% or nothing at all. And God, you have put it on the line. You have put your word, your reputation, your, your character, your integrity on the line by promising that if we would give you 100% of what we have, you will bless it. You will grow it. You will multiply it. You will increase it. You will expand it. You will elevate it. You will, will make it great. God, you will do the impossible with it if we will give you our all. So, Father God, we pray right now that, God, you will help us to become disciples and stewards that are spiritually accountable. God, let us uh, serve you in thought word and deed let us always put you first in all that we do wherever we go and whoever we encounter let you god precede us so that persons will not only know you but they will see our demonstrated accountability and they will be led to join you god and become part of this thing called the body of christ the church universal Father God, thank you for even finding us worthy to be entrusted with talents. In fact, God, that could be a whole uh, devotional all by itself. You found us worthy to be entrusted with that which belongs to you. Ministry belongs to you. Life belongs to you. Health belongs to you. Happiness belongs to you. Joy belongs to you. Peace belongs to you. These things belong to you. They do not belong to us. You share them with us because you love us. But you also share them with us because you expect us to use these things and many more to bless the lives of other people. And so, God, let us not be stingy and selfish with the blessings that you've given us. If you've given us happiness, let us spread joy and happiness. If you've given us peace, let us spread peace. If, God, you console and comfort us, let us console and comfort others. God, if you strengthen us, let us strengthen others. God, if you've enabled us and equipped us, let us enable and equip others. So that, God, there is a return on our and our account our stewardship that God there is meat in your barn there are sheep in your barn for you to collect upon your return now father God we're going to transition for the devotional section of our prayer conference call to the prayer section of our conference call God we want your Holy Spirit to continue to rest rule and abide on this call we don't want you to pull back pull out of this we want you to stay here to run the course with us God so that Every aspect of this call is accountability and action where you're glorified, you're honored, and praised. Father God, sensitize us, empathize us so that we're able to let the prayer concerns, prayer requests, praise reports, words of encouragement, testimonies, and witnesses that your people need so that your people may walk away from this prayer conference call empowered 
equipped and encouraged to be effective, efficacious, and efficient uh, disciples and stewards. God, if you do that, we will be certain to bless your holy name. It's in your sons, mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 It's time for us to jump in uh, and start lifting up our prayer requests, our praise reports, our prayers, our words of encouragement, our testimonies and witnesses. If you're on the phone, what we want you to do is to jump in, give us your name, where you're calling from, and how we can pray with you. If you don't want to tell us who you are, just tell us how we can pray with you, and we'll pray with you for whoever, even if it's you. If you're on Facebook Live, continue to use the comment box to type in your prayer request, amen, that you have, uh, that you want us to lift up, amen. If you're on YouTube and you're watching the playback, the call is over right now. Okay, but that doesn't mean you cannot uh, send us your prayers, your prayer requests, and your praise reports. Email them to me, Pastor Al Kenan the Third, P A P A S T O R A L K E N N O N I I I at gmail.com. That's my name, Pastor Al Kenan the Third at gmail.com. Or if you're on Facebook, you have a Facebook account. Find my Facebook profile, Al Kennan. Look for what well, actually is, is you. You, I used to have a, a, a emoji that looks like me. Now my profile picture is the word Ophili Ophilima, and it's in Greek. Look for that. Uh, amen. It's in purple, gold, and white. Look for that. Send me your uh, prayer request. Not only will I pray for it when I get it, receive it, I will bring it back to the next edition of Inspiration Wednesdays, and we will pray for you again. You'll get double for your trouble. Amen. So here, let's open up the uh, uh, the the floor to receive our prayer requests, praise reports, prayers, word, words of encouragement, testimonies, and witnesses. If you have one, give us your name, where you're calling from, and how we can pray for you. Yes, I can. How are you? Hi, Pastor. Yes, I'm good. This is Ashlyn in Michigan. And so I was telling us thank you for that, that devotion of that. It's like one of my favorite Bible stories. And I always kid around saying, I'm just going to work with one talent that God gave me. Amen. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I have some praise reports. Um, okay. My first prayer, um, praise report is that my friend Diane's husband, Right. For a number of years, and they just like they were out of options, and she just got word that he was part of a new trial, and it seems to be working. Amen. Especially to go back to work after April the seventh. Amen. so we can pray with you. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, amen. Amen. Let me let me speak this word that God dropped into my spirit as soon as you said that you're tired. God wants you to rest. Okay. Um, you cannot present well tired. You just can't. I'm sorry. And God, this is what God also is saying. He's saying, Ashlyn, you know the material. You live this material. You breathe this material. You use and do this material every single day. The issue is not whether or not you are capable of giving a dynamite presentation. Or it, and it's not whether or not you you need to spend an inordinate amount of time trying to figure out how to present it. The issue is you being rested before the presentation. You know what's coming. And so I don't know if you've rested up to now. I feel God saying you really haven't. But the word is trust him, rest. Stop worrying about how they're going to receive the presentation. That's not your job anyway. That's his job. Your job is just to present. And he's saying you cannot present tired. He said because it will not work. It will be ineffective. It will not produce the result that you're thinking of, thinking about. Remember, giving it your all means giving it your best. That demonstrated accountability, that means taking the steps you need to take right now so that when you present, you present your best. And so uh, I, that's the word. And so I'm adding another prayer request to your list of prayer requests that you would rest and that God would enable you to rest. So that means you may have to turn off the telephone, turn off the TV in the evenings and just rest. Get a book that you're want, you've been wanting to read, sit down and read it, and let yourself doze off to sleep. Rest. If you would rest, he'll do the rest. Because you've already done, you've already prepared for the uh, presentation. I know you have. I, 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 I know who my friend and my girl is. Uh, hey, 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 I know you. So I know you are well prepared for this presentation. Now you need to rest. Get some rest, okay? Uh, here, let's go to God in prayer on behalf of uh, Suzanne and everyone. She's uh, 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 on behalf of uh, uh, Dr. Ashlyn and Suzanne and Diane and everyone that Dr. Ashlyn is lifting up in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, first and foremost, God, we thank you for our sister, not just our sister in Christ, but our sister in life. Our sister in spiritual accountability and growth. Our prayer partner and fellow prayer warrior. God, we call her by name, Dr. Ashlyn Curry. God, we thank you for her. We thank you for the life, God, that you've given her, the abilities that you've given her, the talents that you've given her, the skills and the gifts that you've given her, God. We thank you, God, for how she plays such an active role, leading role, guiding role, central role in so many people's lives. God, she may never know just how far uh, the impact of her reach is, but God, she is reaching a whole lot of people just by being a good steward over that which you've given her. God, you've charged her with literacy and literacy in young people. And God, she's passionate about literacy. She's tenacious about literacy. She's headstrong and determined that these young people will read. And so, God, we thank you for such burning passion, for such determination, such tenacity, God. And, God, we pray that you continue to bless her and use her to your glory. Father God, 
We also pray that you would allow her, enable her, permit her to abide in the word that you've given her rest. God, she's an intellectual. An intellectual that always wants to give her best, do her best, be her best. And sometimes, God, in being the best, she works beyond the stopping point when she should really rest. Help her to understand, God, that everything she needs in the presentation is already in her. That all the times preparing, creating, teaching, instructing, this these times have equipped her with what she needs to be able to present well. But God, help her also understand that if she's tired, if she's exhausted, if she's worn out, then she will not present well. So God, we pray that you'll create a space and a place for her to rest. In fact, God, we know our friend ordained things so that rest occurs. God, silence that cell phone. Hold up some of them emails. Allow our sister to be able to go home, sit down, to let her hair down, to woosah, and just relax. Don't be stressed about anything. Don't be worried about anything. Just relax. And to trust you, God, that you are already in her tomorrow, whatever her tomorrow is, in her tomorrow, working things out so that, God, not only does she present well, but also, God, so that you are glorified in how she is stewarding the talent you have given her. I think it's not an accident, God, that this scripture is one of <coughs> Dr. Curry's favorite scriptures. I think it resonates with her because, God, she recognizes what you've given her. And her aim and desire is to be deemed a good and trustworthy servant. Not a wicked and lazy one. And so God, help her to be that good, trustworthy servant. Help her to steward her talent in a way that produces a return for you when you return on her day of judgment. Father God, we mentioned it at the beginning of our call today. But it was so good to hear Dr. Curry bring up Sister Diane and her husband and how God you have heard the prayers of your children on behalf of him and her and that God you are, have are dealt with and are dealing with the tumor and the brain cancer so that this brother can return to work. Do you know God that most people that, that suffer from a brain tumor and brain cancer never ever recover? It usually spells the end of their lives. But God, you thought it not robbery to save, extend, heal, to give our brother and sister Diane more life together. Father God, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We love you, God, for blessing us. We don't even know Diane and her husband. And guess what, God? We don't have to know Diane and her husband. Faith is not conditional knowledge. Faith is conditional obedience. And God, you told us to pray. So God, we thank you. We celebrate you. We honor you, God. We lift you up and we glorify you for what you've done in Diane's life and her husband's life. Father God, we thank you, God, for letting young master Raekwon find purpose, God something that he's passionate about. And we thank you, God, for allowing him to come to his first real estate sale. God, we pray that this is like a domino falling on a domino board, that it's just more dominoes that will keep falling the more, God, he walks with you, the more he trusts you, that, God, this would just be literally the tip of the iceberg of real estate success, that he, uh, professional success that he will um, experience as a real estate agent. God, protect him, keep him. Watch over him, God. There are people in the real estate business that are not on the up and up. That are engaged in a lot of crooked, evil, and criminal stuff. Guide him, steer him away from those people. 
even God, when he's not even aware that he's around them, steer him away from those persons so that God, he may continue to be exactly who you called him to be. God, bless Dr. Curry's entire family, not just her nephew, Raekwon. Bless, bless her sisters. Bless her cousins. Bless her mom. Bless her aunts. Bless her extended family. Bless them, God. So that God, the world may see that you're still in the blessing business. God, we pray for Dr. Suzanne Smith. She has her own prayer request, God, that we're going to raise up shortly. But God, Dr. Ashlyn thought it not robbery. So, so did Sister Vita. The two friends thought it not robbery. The two sisters thought it not robbery to mention their friend and her family in their time of loss and grieving. They're mourning the loss of her stepfather, Marvin Hartzell. God, we, we've said it before, and we, it's worthy, worth saying again. No matter how much time we have, none of us are prepared for death when it comes. Even if we had a million years to pray for it, we still will think that when death comes, it came too soon. Father God, console them, comfort them, heal them, nurture them. Let them know that before Marvin ever belonged to them, he was your child, your creation. And as such, God, you need him more than we do. That, God, your night sky is brighter now because there's a new star named Marvin there. Hanging out, brightening, brightening the universe for all to see. Father God, we pray for the Leo project, we pray, God, that it would benefit and reach the children that it needs to reach. We pray for workers. We pray for resources. We pray for opportunities. We pray, God, that the Leo project just will be a movement inside of itself that changes literacy for young people. Father God, excuse me, we pray for Sister Vita. We pray, God, for her business that she's starting. We pray, God, excuse me, that you would enable it to be successful, that you would enable it to do that, God, which you've called it to do, and that, God, also that you will bless the Servita in terms of her high blood pressure. Bring it down, God. And if that means God helping Sister Vita learn how to live a healthier life, then God, so be it. Let her learn how to live a healthier life. Let her incorporate healthy eating, healthy habits, and, and exercise. Because, God, what we want to see is the fullness of your love, grace, and mercy realized in her. So, God, do it. Bless her. Keep her. Father God, Again, watch over Dr. Curry. Do for her what she cannot do for herself and those connected to her. And we'll be certain to give your name to honor the praise of glory it so richly deserves. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 It's so awesome and so wonderful to hear your voice Dr. Ashland. I, I pray for you all the time. I really do. And to hear your voice is confirmation to me that God's been listening to my prayers. Amen. Amen. So, we are still receiving prayer requests, praise reports, prayers, words of encouragement, testimonies, witnesses. If you have one, all you have to do is jump in, give us your name, where you're calling from, we'll go from there. If you're on Facebook, Use the, the comment box at the bottom, amen, uh, to type in your prayer request, uh, your, uh, uh, your praise report, your prayer, your words of encouragement, your testimonies, and your witness, witnesses. If you're on YouTube, send me the email or go to my Facebook page, Al Cannon. Send me uh, an email or a direct message uh, that you, what your prayer requests are. And we will raise them. Again, my email address is Pastor Al Kennan the Third. Amen. Pastor Al Kennan the Third at gmail.com. Pastor Al Kennan the Third at gmail.com. Amen. Amen. Let's see what our next prayer 
uh, request is amen amen i see yep here it is i see sister lily is asking uh that we pray for her back amen she's having some issues with her back we will do just that we're going to pray for your back sister lily she wants us to pray for her family and the recent loss of a loved one she wants us to pray for uncle james who has cancer pray for uncle tommy who has dementia dementia Pray for Cousin Mary Glenn for her health. Pray for Cousin Gloria McCallan for her health. Uh, pray for all dealing with all those persons dealing with illnesses. She has a praise, uh, praise report. Uh, prayers answered for Derek Jones. He has a permanent full-time job now with ABM. Amen. Whatever uh, uh, corporation that is, ABM, he has a uh, job, a full-time job now uh, with ABM. Amen. Praise God. Uh, if you have a prayer request, praise report, prayer, words of encouragement, testimony, witness like that that you would like to raise, please uh, put them uh, on our uh, virtual altar as we go to God in prayer. Here, let us go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, first of all, God, we want to begin by thanking you for Sister Lily Glenn. She thought it not robbery, God, to put herself and the people she know on your virtual altar. She's trusting by faith, God, that simply mentioning what they're going through is enough to move you into action, to move you on their behalf, to transform situations, to heal illnesses and sicknesses, to mend hearts, to comfort and console broken spirits. God, she's expecting by faith you to do an incredible work for those, God, that she's connected to. And you know what, God? She's not wrong. In fact, we touch and agree with her. We too stand on faith believing that everything she's asked you to do, you will do in your time and according to your will. Father God, we pray for Sister Lily. She indica she's indicating that she's having issues, problems with her back. We don't know exactly what they are, but God, we know you do. And it's not important for us to know exactly what the problems are. It's only important that you, God, are moving on Sister Lily's beha behalf healing her back issues so that God, she's able to continue to be the disciple and steward you call her, called her to be. Father God, we pray for her family and the recent loss of a loved one. Again, losing a loved one is never easy, God. It's hard. It's difficult. It's trying. It's stressful. It's debilitating. It's injurious. It's devastating. It's damaging. I mean, we can continue to list adverb after adverb and adjective after adjective. But the fact remains, God, that death is nothing to play with. And God, we pray that you would do for Sister Lily's family what you're doing for Sister Suzanne and her family. That you would comfort them and console them. That you would nurture them and heal them mend their hearts and their spirits, God, so that, God, they are able to continue to trust you, serve you, to believe in you. Father God, we pray right now for Uncle James as he continues to battle cancer. You know, cancer is that ugly little liar. It's that little demon, God, that constantly tries to position itself, position itself ahead of you. It wants the world to think you it is more powerful than you are. God, the devil is a liar. Cancer is just a condition that God, you have beat so many times before. You have defeated cancer so many times before. And God, we pray right now that God, you would heal not only Uncle James, but everyone, God, that's wrestling with cancer. Move on their behalf move in their lives, move in their treatments, move upon the mind, spirit, and bodies and souls of their doctors and physicians, move in the operating rooms and the emergency rooms, God, move how you need to move so that cancer is eradicated. And God, while it's our prayer that you eradicate cancer completely, we understand that there are some cases 
where some of us will have to go through the experience. And instead of us thinking, God, that you're capricious, unloving, uncaring, help us to realize, God, that you've selected us because, God, you found, you believe, you concluded that we're strong enough to battle the cancer and still be paragons of light still be disciples and stewards to bring you glory, honor, and praise. To still are people that are able to show the world how to live to the fullest in spite of the cancer that we're suffering from. Give those of us who must bear this cross an extra portion of favor and anointing so that we bear it as good stewards, as good disciples, as good servants, as good sons and daughters. Father God, we pray right now for Uncle Tommy and anyone else who's suffering from dementia. God, we pray for them, that you would keep them, God, that you allow these latter years, these sunsetting years, to be as good as these sunrise years. That, God, you surround them with love, care, and support so that, God, even in this time of losing who they were, they still have all of you. I know it's hard on family members, God. I know this firsthand. I know, God, that there are times where family members want to scream and holler and bang their fists against a wall, to kick down a tree. But, God, help us understand that, God, you knew this was coming and that, God, you have already taking the steps to ensure that what we see will not be the lasting memory of what we have, the lasting memory of what we have in those persons that we love, cherish, and adore. Father God, we pray right now for Cousin Mary Glenn and, and, and Cousin Gloria McCallan for their health. Whatever their health issues are, God, we pray that you would bless them, enable them, allow them, God, to recover and be healed, God. God, we pray right now for all persons dealing with illnesses. And God, we thank you for the praise report of for providing Brother Derek Jones a full-time employment at ABM. God, we pray right now that you let Brother Jones, Brother Derek, understand that that full-time employment is a talent. It's your property that you've given to him. And let him be the greatest steward he can be for you at that job so that God there's a return on his management of the talent you've given him father God we lift these prayers up in the only name both in the heaven and the earth that has the power to realize the petitions we have have raised it's in your son's mighty matchless marvelous magnificent name that we do pray amen amen everyone amen praise God we have a few more minutes amen praise God uh, if you have a prayer request, praise report, prayer, words of encouragement, testimony, or witness that you would like to share, uh, we want you to give us your name uh, and where you're calling from, and we'll go from there. If you don't want us to know who you are, simply tell us uh, what it is you want us to pray with you about, and we'll do that. If you're on Facebook, please raise your prayer request, your prayer uh, petitions, uh, your words of encouragement, uh, um, uh, and, and, and your testimonies, and we'll go from there. Amen. I'm just reading. Amen. I'm just reading. Amen. Amen. The conversation on online has been lively today. I, I see that Sister Gail has had to leave, uh, had to go because she has an appointment this morning. Uh, let me raise in her absent her prayer request because she actually sent me her last night. Uh, you know, Sister Gail is one of those who doesn't play. If you tell her you're going to pray, oh, she's going to hit you with her prayer request. And so um, she asked us that, asked that we would pray for her family, her friends, her finances, for, for protection, for provision, for health, uh, for, uh, for Tamika and Teddy and Shamika, not Tamika, Shamika and Teddy, her son and daughter, uh, to pray for certain family members and to pray for everyone around the world. And I told her we will. We're going to tag that prayer request, amen, with uh, several 
prayer request from Sister Vita Harrell. She wants us to pray for the Clyburn family because Ronnie Clyburn recently died in a car crash. She wants us to pray for Nikki Tucker because Nikki Tucker lost her husband recently to cancer. Again, she wants us to pray for Suzanne Smith and the Hartsoul family and the loss of Suzanne's uh, stepfather, Marvin. Uh, comfort and protect, comfort and, and consoling. She wants us to pray for Ashlyn Curry and friends to protect and provide for them. She wants us to pray for Brianna Harrell that she has traveling mercy. She wants us to pray for uh, Ayana Harrell and Marshawn Jones. I think Jones is his last name. Um, and traveling mercy. She wants again wants us to pray for her mother Minnie Clyburn and her father Dennis Huntley as well as uh, for her new business and for her health. Amen. While we're there, let's tag, let's also lift up Suzanne Smith's prayer. She wants us to pray specifically for her mother. Um, she says her mother, uh, after losing her stepfather, after losing her husband, is a little hesitant to be in the house by, by herself. That's natural, completely natural. Depending on how long you've been with someone, and, and many of our parents been with our uh, been with each other a long time. In fact, my parents would, would have been with each other 55 years the day my the, the year my father died. That means she was with her husband, my father, longer than she was with her parents. So she left home at 16. She went to college at 16, and she was married about three weeks after graduating from college. So she's been with dad. Uh, or had been with dad longer uh, than she had been with anybody else. And I can remember she came to church once and after dad had died and people were coming and hugging her and she was talking with my mother-in-law. And my mother-in-law had pulled her to the side because my mother-in-law also has lost uh, her husband. My father-in-law died six months after my wife and I got married. And so she was just trying to comfort my mom and I heard my mom crying say, saying, I'm fine until I think about he's not in the house. When I think about he's not there to have dinner with me or he's not there to get up and walk with me, he's not there to go to the mall with me or to go to Walmart with me, she said, Walmart with me, she said, that's when it really gets difficult. And she says, I'm so happy that one of my sons is here with me and the other son is like a, a roving eagle or a roving vulture who's always checking on me. Because it's not easy living in by yourself when you've got you and you've gotten a cousin of living with someone else. And so we're praying for Sue Hartso's Dr. Smith's mother, that God you would either uh, provide her the comfort and the security she needs to be there, or that God you would provide her with someone that can be there with her so that she can enjoy the home that she and Marvin created for one another. She wants us to pray for her family that depression and anxiety do not control, have control over anyone uh, in her or any of her family members. And she also has an unspoken prayer request. Amen. This is what we're going to do. We're going to raise all these prayers together in one last on the bus prayer. Because I'm looking at the time. We're almost at the 830 hour. Uh, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing here in this space and place. And I pray that God add a special blessing upon you for your willingness to be here to pray with us at Touch and Agree. And by the way, let me say thank you to Lily Glenn. So, so I saw the compliment you posted. Uh, I'm only faithful. And let me thank you on behalf of Pastor Kevin. We're only thankful because God has helped us be thankful. I mean, helped us to be, we're only faithful because God has helped us be faithful. All right. We're thankful for you recognizing it, but we're only faithful because of God first empowering us to be faithful. As Paul said, none of us sought God. God sought us. And is in seeking us, God has empowered us to be who he originally wants us to be. So him and I, Pastor Kevin and I, are thanking you for recognizing our faithfulness. But please understand that our faithfulness uh, is a result of God's faithfulness towards us. It's a response of faith to the faith he demonstrates and shows us. Here, let us go to God. Let us uh, lift up this last on the bus prayer. Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now 
lifting up God this omnibus prayer. Father God, there's so many dimensions, aspects of this prayer, God, that God, truthfully, we could spend all day long praying the petitions within it. But Father God, we know we don't need to because we know not only you are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, but God, you're also omnitherous. That you're all things to all people at all times without diminishing who you are at any time while being all things to all of us. That God, while you are answering my prayers, you're answering Sister uh, Vita's prayers. While you're answering Sister Vita's prayers, you're answering Sister Suzanne's prayers. While you're answering Sister Suzanne's prayer, you're answering Sister Lily's prayer. While you're answering Sister Lily's prayer, you're ask, answering Pastor Kevin White's prayer. And you're doing that for all of us, God. You are showing up, and regardless of the shape, size, form, or fashion that we need you, you are showing up perfectly conformed to what we need so that, God, we all have what we need, and, God, we're all able to praise you. God, you've heard the requests. You've heard the situations. You've heard the issues. You've heard the problems. You've heard the predicaments. You've heard the trials. You've heard the tribulations. Now, God, we ask that you show up and show out. That you prove to the world while we refer to you as the Lord God Almighty. While we say there's none greater, none higher than you. That you show us that you are the most high God. That you show us that you're El Elohim, that you're Yahweh, that you're Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sikhanu, uh, Je uh Jehovah Shalom. That God, that you are everything we need you to be. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, because, because it's through him that we can even exercise faith, that we can even serve you. It's by the blood that he shed that we even can come before you to petition you and drop these prayer, prayer requests at your feet. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, God, that you continually send us to guide us, to lead us, to direct us in all things as we move through th these things that we call life. Father God, I love you. Sister Vita loves you. Sister Lily loves you. Sister Suzanne loves you. And God, we pray that you will be mindful of the people that we're asking you to pray for. Protect Brianna, Ayana, Marshawn, uh, Minnie, Dennis, Sue, Eva, Anne. Terry, Greer, Willie, Danny, Chris, Champagne, Danielle, DJ, Allegra, Latissa, Chris Jr., Sharon, Rodney, Mike, Michael, Dunn, Jasmine, Yolanda, Darlene, Remy, uh, Blaine, Terrence, Phil, Lester, Charles, James, Nikki, Camille, Camille, Erica, Leslie, uh, Wendy, Teravia, Jacqueline, Kimberly, Kim, Michelle, Shelley, Catherine. God, in fact, we could keep listing names of the people we want you to protect and, and, and pray. Elvin, Willie, Eileen, Jacqueline, Brian, Theo, David, David, Darwin, Darwin, Greg, Tuan, Karen, Veronica, Hugh, Alexia, Candace, Adrenia, Danita. The names could go on and on, but God, we want you to protect and keep them so that God, when we begin praising your name, we have no reason to stop ever in doing that. Father God, we love you. We praise you. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. It is 8.
30. Amen. We are going to bring today's prayer conference call to a close. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for being part of what God has uh, has created for us here in this conference call. And we pray that God will richly bless you as you move through the rest of this day, the rest of this week, and into next week. We look forward to praying with you next week. Uh, amen. Let's have our closing word of prayer. Then we're going to get busy enjoying this day that you have made. God, thank you for this time, place, and space that you've carved out for us to worship you uh, through the ministry of prayer. Father God, we pray that you received every single prayer request, praise report, words of encouragement, testimony and witness and prayer that we lifted up. And God, we pray that you would continue to be glorified in all we do. Continue to be with us, direct us, guide us, and never leave us. Protect us and provide for us. Watch over us till we return again to worship you in spirit and truth through the ministry of prayer. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Please have a blessed week. We will pray with you next week. Bye-bye.